Welcome to News Laundry. Today we have with us Amrita Tripathi, a journalist of eight years, which has a ring to it apparently. Uh, it does. Is, it most certainly does. <laughs> who is in IBN now and was in the Indian Express yeah. and is also the author of a book called Broken News. Let's start with your book first. Is the book about what the name suggests it is? Yeah, I thought I was being very clever and punning on the whole how we're obsessed with breaking news. But also it is to reflect on uh, all the, I think what I wanted to do is show all these relationships that fall apart and whether it's family or romantic and so on and so forth. So the character is kind of broken too, you see. Because of the news? Or that's it's, the news plays a very vital role because I think that in all the dialogue that has been, that has happened about TV news specifically and all the things that are wrong with it and all the things that people love about it, I don't think anyone really focuses on the sort of pawns and soldier ants, you know what I mean, mm. the people. And I think you have a generation of people coming in who don't really know what to expect, but also it, the fact that it takes such a huge toll, right? Because you're, you're pulling these 15-hour shifts and, you know, it's just expected. It takes a huge toll how? Uh, emotionally your, or physically? Or? Both, actually. But I was exploring more the emotional side of it and just um, life-wise. Because I, I think you have to be, especially when you're starting out married to your job, and that... It, how old were you when you started as a reporter? In TV, 23. In TV, yeah. 23. And but followed my, you with print? Yeah, for two years. And no, I love it. I love I love being in um, TV news. But I wanted to sort of hype, uh, you know, and exaggerate certain elements. So it was, it, it's completely a dramatic tale. Like it's not my story. It's uh, okay. I had to explain this to a lot of people, including my mother. Although I must say that for any writer, especially their first book or their first yeah. uh, attempt at any writing, yeah. will have huge doses of an autobiographical nature, whether you like it or not. All other writers except this one, <laughs> apparently. No, that's, you're, you're right, because I think you end up taking so much from life. Mm -hmm. But I was really paranoid about certain things. I didn't want people to think it was like a tell-all, because I think people want to know what's going on. But mm -hmm. I was paranoid about names, for example. Like, okay. I went through my, like, and all of the characters to make sure there are no names of people. Well, you think it would affect you professionally? It, 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 it may be a problem professionally? I, I think there's a lot of curiosity in my office. Like, oh my god, who's in this? And uh, there's a lot of speculation on, oh, are you talking about this person and that person? But as I keep telling you? people, no, of course not. Of course not. Buy it, read it, see? <laughs> but what happens is, it's like, an, you know, you do amalgamate, right? So mm -hmm. you kind of like, I can tell where certain characters just have come from. Mm -hmm now especially, like reading it now, like a couple of years after I've written it. At that point, of course, I thought it was just very insightful and, you know, like there's nothing automatic. Okay, since you've been with print and television both, there seems to be this myth, I think it's a myth uh, personally, but tell me what you think, that print is smart and uh, television is dumb, news-wise. Yeah. You think that's true uh, or you think it's just this little bubble that the print world has yeah. created? <laughs> They've created it. No, I don't. You know, I don't know why it persists so much. I, I can. You can see where it comes from, though, right? Because you print, you do have the space, and you, you can get into things more in depth. And television, it's just so quick that it's. A, a lot of times, I feel like more superficial than it needs to be. Mm -hmm. It's not the case. Like when you have features reporting and you have more mm -hmm. time, but I think because you're going for that instant, everything has to be like just on the dot. That's where it comes from. You think it's and hysterical? It can get hysterical, yes. Mm -hmm. um, and that's something I think we do have to guard against also. And hyping things in general. How about like your it channel? I mean, on the hysterical I scale of 0 to 10. We're perfectly balanced. Really? Completely, yes. <coughs> which, one, which channel do you think is hysterical? <laughs> no, I don't, uh, I don't want, I don't want to say which channel is hysterical. Okay. And I, I don't want to say, but I think TV news runs this risk. And okay, we're so going. I'll tell you, why is it like this? That on everything else, um, you know, political parties will attack each other. The Congress <laughs> is like the BJP, you don't like the BJP. Uh, even corporate houses, though they're a little more guarded. With television, if a newspaper is reporting about a certain publication is having problems <laughs> of succession, they won't say Hindus have problems and Ram. Yeah. No. Uh, with TV news, yeah. a certain channel reported, which we would like to say was incorrectly reported. Why doesn't the channel just say, you know what, Times not reported that? That was cr a crock of shit. Anything yeah. reported that? That was. Why is it this? We will not take the names in television news. What is it? Do you think it's only television? I think it's, I think it's, it's legal I think it's implications. Only, no, it's, there's no legal implications. Really? I mean, can you be sued for slander and so on? No, and so you can just say I think X Y Z is hysterical. Yeah. Why, why do you I'm think that actually is? not going to say anything of the sort, but no. Um, I don't know. You think? Are you trying to say that TV channels have a sort yeah, of bad have this, yeah. silence? Yeah. I don't actually think of that. Not many people like each other across channels. I mean, exactly. so I mean, I'm, I'm surprised. But I don't know. Maybe also because it's not. I don't think it's channel specific so much. I mean, I think Times Now has chosen, since we're discussing Times Now, to take a very strong line. Mm -hmm. And I've met Arnab a couple of times and I think he's perfectly charming and so on. But I think it was very clear a few years ago that he decided to take it, like sort of this Fox News model or whatever right. it is. When, I, when we're talking about hysteria in the news, what I'm more worried about is like the hype and the... Because, and for example, something like this, like the Salman Rushdie thing, for, talking about the fact that, you know, when, when you're talking about threats being made against him, mm -hmm. I feel like maybe the media shouldn't have even acknowledged the fact that someone's right. offering a, a lakh rupees for someone to throw a shoe at him or whatever it is. Are you, know? you here as a writer or as a journalist? Both. 
So, all the are you covering this aspect of the lit fest of um, Salman Rushdie? Yeah, of course. Today is all about Salman Rushdie. We're trying to we're sneak but, in other stuff but too. But why? Although you don't agree with it being covered. No, I don't. No, I agree with the fact that it's a news point. But I'm just saying that there are ways of doing it. So, if I was to say that I would, I'm worried about hype and hysteria, it would be when it comes to causing, for example, harm. So, I don't think that English news channels have that much of a viewer base. For example, like you know, in an Aaj Tak, if you're talking about possible protests of this nature, you're you're reaching out to like much, mm -hmm. much more people. I feel like you do have to acknowledge the fact that there are protests being planned and we are aiming for balance. It's not like we're not either as mm. a channel, but it's just, it's one of those things that makes you stop and think, right? Because I mean, are you putting someone's life at potentially more risk because you're giving sure. you know, this platform? But that's a debate that I think that goes on like across the board, right? I okay. mean, it's sort of... Let's tell you one more thing. Uh, TV news uh, has got a lot of hate lately as well. Mm. You know, uh, especially TV news personalities, you know, Barka has a hate page dedicated to her. Anywhere you, you go, you start to say, what does Arnab think? He's why he's lecturing us. Uh, I, you know, have, have observed similar thoughts about everybody. What is it uh, you think that the people don't understand about news that you think there's a good opportunity to tell them that behind the scenes it's not so easy to do a story? I mean, do you think this hate is justified or people don't see something and that's why there is increasingly this vitriol you know, against news? Yeah, I, I, I don't know. Are we increasingly going the way of this cult of the personality? Because frankly, I don't think that... I mean, if you're going to build someone up, it's as a viewer also, right? I mean, I think Barka, I've seen her tweeting, I mean, her tweets, whatever, in response sometimes, and it's true, like, change the channel. If you don't like someone, you know, just... You don't have to watch them. But I don't think people do appreciate... I mean, I don't think they... I don't know that they need to. Frankly, as a viewer, do you care that the person you're watching on air is having, like, you know, has to... No, but why do you think there is this sentiment of, of, of such a Strong. Certain, certain section, a certain revulsion to news or news personalities? Why it's do you think bizarre. that? Is? I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's, you're, it's very recent in that sense. So I'm not sure that um, anyone knows why, except maybe that all of a sudden, like, these personalities have become larger than... Like, I mean, it's, it's taken them. They've all been working for, like, 20-odd years, I feel, right? Not eight. But 20. <laughs> She's <laughs> but, so years, feel, <laughs> yeah, but you know, I mean, because you've been in the field for long enough also to see, but I think that it's it's reached that peak where they're, they're personalities in their own right, right? I mean, you go, if a Varka or Rajdeep or Arna walks on the street, they're recognized. So, as as public perso Are personas. You? <laughs> well, <laughs> now that we're on that, no, I get, I get, I mean, people, I think they, they know that they've seen me somewhere, they're not sure where. I get some really honest, sweet school kids who are like, Are you on CNN and IBN? And I'm like, Yes, we have like, you know, more viewers than we thought, but. No, it doesn't happen in that sense, and I don't get, um, luckily, um, hate mail, but I, we have, for example, now, you know, like we have Twitter, we tweet, we have public pages, you get really random comments, frankly, like, I mean, it's not, I don't even know that I would want to internalize any of that, so that's my, probably what I tell them too, because I'm sure they know this, because uh, a lot of it is not you, it's what that person is bringing to it, right, I mean, why would you, I mean, would you ever take that much effort to really hate someone who you don't even know, who you're watching, mm. deliver the news of all things, you know, but sure, sure. I, I think it's also because Indians are so opinionated, right, we're so passionate about everything, we know everything before it's even happened, so, I don't know. Okay, tell me, what is it about TV news that you like the most? Oh, trick question. Oh. Um, I'm not sure. I'm tempted to say it's like a massive adrenaline rush. As a as viewer, it, as, as a it, presenter? As a presenter. Okay. It's, and it's like the best way to be plugged into something. And mm. I don't know if it's misleading or not. That's kind of what I was exploring in my book. Is that you feel like you're part of it, you know? Like this mm. thing that's unfolding and going on. Mm. But I think that also has its, its huge drawbacks, you know? Because it's uh, obviously that's also addictive and you kind of get sucked into this whole... I mean, you're not the news. It's happening around you. You feel like you're... So it's, you know? it's very possible to get sucked into being the subject. So you think some people um, are victim of that? You think that's happening? I, I think that enough checks and balances that it doesn't happen that often because you don't. It's not like you know. I mean, it, it's it's not an ego vehicle in that sense, and you get caught out pretty quickly too. You know, like okay. I mean, I mean, for example, reporters even doing as a, uh, as a reporter doing a story. Okay. If you make it more about you than the story, no one's really going to watch Beyond a Point. You know. And what do you dislike most about TV news? <laughs> the hours. No, no, actually, uh, but even this, like this, this cutting down, culling, like you know, when you've like shot this much just to come out with like a one, it's it's a challenge. It's fulfilling sometimes, but it can be a little annoying also to have to take those twenty second bites when you want to, you know, let let people say what they actually want to say. So the trick is to put it all online. I've realized because we have our website now, and we just so and people print, get to see. what was most exciting about print, and what didn't you um, like about print? Print, I really did enjoy, except I was on the desk for the most you part. You didn't so enjoy? I right? did, I you did. did. Okay. And I started writing and, and doing interviews and I started reporting a little bit, but I was mainly on the desk and I couldn't stand it beyond a point. It was just, Why? I just, I couldn't. It, was, it wasn't for me. <laughs> it was just... Which is your favorite yeah. newspaper? The Express, which I worked for, the Indian Why? Express. I, I just, I love them. It feels like home. I'm used to the paper. So I you hate Anna Hazare too, I guess? No. Now he comes with the, like the real. No, I don't hate Anansari. I think he was made more of Your a paper does. cult phenomenon. So anyway, are we winding down now? <laughs> if I get in any more trouble <laughs> soon. No, no, no. Okay, yeah, and, uh, so that's, that's that's your favorite newspaper. Yeah, it is. And okay, who's your favorite journalist? 
Who do you who would you like to emulate? I mean, who do you really respect as a journalist? Journalist, you don't have to say Rajdeep. <laughs> He'd probably slap me for that. Rajdeep, come on. Huh? No, um, I don't know. I, for a long time, I used to think Christian Aman Puru was very young, but now I'm not sure. I think Robert Fisk maybe. Okay. Are you going to ask me Desi journalist? Because I don't know. I would like to be Desi journalist too. <laughs> I, I don't know that there's anyone I'd want to emulate. Okay, like, but who do you really admire? Very... Who do you really like? Writings, maybe not television. Someone who you think reports really well in print. Who do you think is a really good reporter in India? I don't know. I don't have like a uh, favorite actually. Off the have top you ever of come across a report that was very good? Forget the reporter. My God, you're going to keep at this, aren't you? Um, no, but then no, 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 no idea. Um, Come on, you got to have a reporter you like. I don't really? believe that. I don't have a reporter that I like particularly. Out of anyone. Okay, maybe like, you liked like, one reporter of a reporter <laughs> like, at, at some one point. point in your eight years, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or as a newspaper reader. I'm trying to think, Frank. This is shocking. Yeah, no, I don't. I don't really. Okay, this is fine. Awful. I give sorry, up. Sorry, I'm sorry. Okay. What <laughs> is the best coverage television news has ever given a subject? Unbelievable. Tell me, just Are you not, not, ask not, me not all a, the tough questions. Not a particular channel. Just what subject you think was covered really well, and made you proud to be a television journalist, and which was covered. So badly, it made you cringe. I think 2611 made everyone cringe. I mean, obviously, made also the way it, it okay. made everyone. I mean, it was it, because it was shocking and traumatic enough. The way things played out on TV, I think, were awful. Also. So that was a moment of shame for television. I think so, news. and I think it was acknowledged actually, uh, because uh, this whole thing of setting up a authority and you know figuring out how a to cover. Of pride? Yeah, I think we're going to get there. I can't think of a. No. Um, I know a lot of people love the elections coverage, but I've never been actually. Which election? Um, just generally, our elections coverage is really good. <laughs> but I, I can't think of something that's. Yeah. And why is the media so obsessed with the the Gandhis? Everyone is obsessed with the Gandhis, I believe. Who's everyone? Really, people. Tell me, how do people manifest themselves as being obsessed <laughs> with Gandhis? I don't understand this. You tell me. I don't. I know. don't know. I mean, if I see Mulayam rally, I see a Maya rally, I see as many people in a Gandhi rally. Yeah. But somehow, the number of people. So if you're saying people are obsessed with them, I would beg to differ because there's the same amount of people on a Maya, Mulayam, Akhilesh, yeah. Rahul rally. But the Rahul rally, sometimes somehow the English media is just—is it the dimples? Is it the fair skin? Is it he's no, cute? I, I, you I think Rahul's really, cute? You think he's sexy? It's just I, unbelievable. Just ask him. Yeah. Uh, I have no opinion on the matter. I mean, frankly, <laughs> but I think that uh, surprisingly, though, most people that I've spoken to, in the, even as we cover like all of his rallies yeah. and so on and so forth, because I think everyone presumes he's going to be the next, you know, their uh, next, next, the kingmakers. I personally don't think it's ever going to happen. But anyway. It, yeah. I'm, mm. I'm, I'm not sure, but I mean, in terms of if the Congress comes to power at some point, would they not like to see? Who knows? But mm. most people I've spoken to don't actually like him, and they don't think he's doing that. I think I'm the smartest saying, thing he does is, is why, to stay why quiet. Why channels obsessed with him? Yeah, I don't know. When I have my own channel, I'll tell you. I think the smartest thing he does so though, is like to, to stay quiet. So you like to withdraw the comment saying people are obsessed with him because that's not fair to the people. You want me to withdraw that comment, yeah. don't you? You're going to make me withdraw it. No, I'm I just withdraw asking. it. <laughs> I just I think we presume people are interested, and it's because of the the family has its whole tragic history that has played out and so on. But it's gone beyond that now, so I'm not sure. Okay, favorite right. politician. Oh my. God. Who do you like to interview? Who's fun to interview? Someone really boring. Like, I'll give you some example. Um, Nandan Ilkan is a brilliant guy. I don't know yeah. whether you saw his episode with um, John Stewart. I mean, oh, no, I didn't see my John Stewart. Wow. So you know, he has a guest when he launched that book. John Stewart at the end gave up. He says, "Okay, I, I can't make this episode interesting. Are you serious? It's just so boring. Yeah, it was just because he's a wonderful man, but he was just obviously a boring interview. But so do you have? Do you have, a, do you have any people who are just fantastic to interview and who are really uh, boring to interview? <laughs> Unbelievable! No, as a as a working journalist who wants to stay employed, I will tell you my I think biggest interview was Lady Gaga in LA, oh, and her? it was just yeah. I really? interviewed her right is she after like she won. Insane, clinically. She's completely normal. I mean, not not normal, but she's completely <laughs> like with it. Like she's very. On that note. <laughs> <laughs> He's on. like, yeah, this this reflects on me poorly, doesn't yeah. it? No, I was really surprised because of what you see of her and so on. Yeah. But she's she's completely in charge and aware of. What she projects, what she says, she's very clear about her opinions. You know, like she has. I hit on you when uh, you were into like I, I read. No. Uh, I think Sunetra wrote a piece on a, a politician in the Mint. I think she, in her column oh, she mentioned that some senior politician had hit on her. She didn't name him, which I think she should if you're you know yeah. going for your money. So. But has it ever happened to you? You know, no. never. No. No old daughtery politician has tried to hit on you. No, Betty I don't even do, I don't even do political uh, reporting. So maybe okay. Do oh, anyone an old daughtery? Rashid, have you ever interviewed Rashid? <laughs> no, I haven't. Rashid, did he hit on you? No, I didn't. I didn't interview when he didn't hit on me. Okay. This is, why are we winding down now? Are you having fun? No, I'm this just like, asking. <laughs> no yeah. one has ever. No. Have you ever? Hit on someone while interviewing yeah. them? No. What? You've it's, never it's interviewed anyone attractive? Ever? That's not the same thing. No. I'm just saying. I mean, and I think when you're interviewing someone, or it should be the case. Clearly, I mean, here is something else altogether. Instead of trying to like make me put my foot in my mouth, usually you're <laughs> you're, you're looking at it differently, right? Because I mean, you're you're kind of just focusing on the the person what? as someone who's supposed to answer your questions, as opposed to oh, so a if potential you're doing Brad Pitt, you've like stepped away well, and Brad Pitt. I would like to say, yeah. So would you hear them if you interview him? No, maybe after. Okay, fine. Thank you so much. <laughs>
Thanks. <laughs>